Welcome back after the break. I hope you have rested a little bit. We are still dealing with neuromarketing, emotions and virtual reality. Let's welcome our distinguished guest, Robert Slovak, who will now take the floor. Thank you very much. They say starting after a coffee break is a difficult task, but I hope you can help me with that. I'd like to start by briefly introducing myself. I'm going to talk about a project of the 16 Hertz project. We created this project in our agency called Slovak and Friends. About two years ago, after leaving my previous agency where I worked for 15 years, I founded this agency and we are now in its third year of existence. We built this new agency concept on socially responsible projects and what we want to do is basically bring to marketing and advertising communication a responsible view on how even big companies, brands or corporations can positively contribute to improving the lives of people and their target groups. So it means not only sell products to them, but also to have a positive impact on their health, on the environment they live in or on the planet itself. Companies and corporations are already aware of their presence in this society or rather their responsibility and role. Of course, some of them use or misuse it for greenwashing, but there are many companies that are serious about it. In our agency, I have the opportunity to work for such companies. One of them is Lidl or, or in Slovakia. Another very interesting client for us is OLO, which is a municipal company that deals with waste collection and disposal. So these are the topics that we are dealing with. I would like to briefly remind you we worked on a campaign to increase the number of people participating in the census in Bratislava. And we also worked on the sadly last campaign with Mr. Lasica, where he motivated Bratislava residents to participate in the census and where we used various cognitive practices, particularly in copy texts. We worked on the campaign Svedetstva, that could be translated as testimonies, created by the Alliance of Women of Slovakia. The aim of this campaign was to shed light on the way violence in relationships works, how women in such violent relationships function and what we can all do to help them. This project received a lot of media support and the support from Mrs. Chaputova, our president. So I consider, I consider this to be one of the highlights of our agency. I also want to briefly talk about new technologies we are working with. TikTok, a social networking service, hasn't been well explored by marketers and advertising people until now. And the campaigns that are created on TikTok are more or less on an experimental level. But we managed to create a TikTok challenge for eating disorder organization called Hujic. Uh, the translation would be Desire to Live, which enthused 130 TikTokers aged from 12 to 20 who took part in a Put Your Finger Down challenge started by Valentina Sedilenkova in the center of the picture a recovered anorexic who showed how we can divide phases that a person with an eating disorder goes through into 10 stages, which in some cases lead to death, either due to health complications or suicide, which is a very underestimated issue in Slovakia. Those were the three highlights, but today I'm going to focus on the 16 Hertz project. I'd like to give you a brief overview of this project in a short video that summarizes everything we have done on this project and then I'll walk you through the process of how this project came to be. Hyperactivity, impulsivity, concentration difficulties. The number of people diagnosed with attention deficit disorder continues to rise, but even healthy people experience concentration difficulties. Research has shown that their ability to concentrate has decreased from 12 seconds to 8. Even a goldfish can concentrate for 9 seconds. Is it even possible to influence the functioning of the brain? Communication between brain neurons creates waves that can be measured. When completely relaxed, it's 10 hertz. When nervous, it's 40. When the brain is fully concentrated, the frequency of brain waves is 16 hertz. The brain can also tune the so-called binaural beats to the desired frequency. 
They are produced when two tones with different frequencies are listened to at the same time through headphones. For example, beats with a frequency of 400 Hz flow into the left ear, 16 Hz less into the right ear, and the brain tunes to this frequency. An unpleasant sound, right? That's why we asked five respected musicians to complement this sound with music. It was not an easy task. The resulting track must not contain distracting elements, the pitch must be within a certain range, and the same goes for the rhythm. We verified the effects of binaural beats with our own experiment. The test subject saw tasks requiring concentration while listening, and at the same time we measured the activity of the brain waves using EEG. We found that the binaural beats do indeed work. Together, we thus created a unique composition that has been proven to improve attention. The project was presented at a special event. The music track was symbolically materialized into a 3D object by the famous sculptor Ashot Haas, who used the parameters of the song. The functioning 40-minute track has been reported by a number of media, made it to radios, and we brought it to co-working spaces and offered it to companies as an interesting benefit for employees who work from home or in shared open spaces. But the project doesn't just help those who need to focus. Proceeds from every downloaded track go to the non-governmental organization League for Mental Health, which helps people diagnosed with attention deficit disorders. This was a brief introduction of the project we have prepared. I'm going to walk you through the process which began with music containing the binaural beat, the 16 Hz one, which I'll explain later, and the sound itself. I'll describe the research that preceded it, how we went about getting it out there, the event where we introduced the project, the media that wrote about it, and the way the project is helpful. At the beginning of the whole thing, there was a special track that was over 40 minutes long and contained the unpleasant tone that you heard. This track, without vocals or major rhythm fluctuations and with all the restrictions, was made by Slovak music producers, whom I will introduce later. And it serves to help people improve their concentration. So, how did we figure it out? Well, we came up with it by starting with research. It was carried out by our strategic director, Romana Uhlianova, who studied cognitive science and, in collaboration with people from the Slovak Academy of Sciences, she tried to prove that stimuli triggered by music can synchronize the brain to a certain frequency, which helps influence brain waves and create neural entrainment. How did it work? We used binaural beats, which are created or produced by playing a tone into a person's ear through an earpiece at a specific frequency of 400 Hz into one ear and playing 16 Hz less in the other ear. The 16 Hz difference that went to the brain through the ears was helping to affect the brain's frequency. There were 30 participants in the experiment sorted into two groups of 15 people. At first, we tested their attention span to see how focused they could be without any influences, so without uh, any sound stimulation. And then the same two groups were divided into one testing sample that only received pink noise in their ears. So pink noise is a sound that uh, doesn't cause anything. Versus a group of 15 other participants who were listening to our test track with contained binaural beat. Then we overlay the binaural beat they were listening to with the song from the music producers. On its own, the binaural beat was just um, such a monotonous noise, so the participants could endure it for 40 minutes. But first, we let that sound stimulation run in their headphones for 10 minutes, and only then did we start the real testing. It was because None of the published studies had applied the binaural beat for longer than 5 minutes. We found out that after 10 minutes the effect was a lot stronger, as if those 10 minutes were the optimal time for the brain to, to tune in, for brain activity to be stimulated the way we needed, and to get to the level of required attention. We used a detection test of maintaining responsiveness to test what it does to people in real life. 
the test was based on assessing reaction time scores, so how quickly a person reacts to a stimulus, which you could see in the video, and also looking at the number of the so-called false reactions, which were not desired, but people tended to react anyway. And so we detected better attention span in the group listening to the binaural beats than in the test group that only heard the, the normal pink noise. This means that the song with the binaural beats may have the potential to be a tool for sustaining long-term attention. The long-term attention in our experiment lasted approximately 40 minutes. This experiment in particular was tested on, on healthy people. We have not, of course, tested how this might work on people who struggle with some disorders. These healthy people showed thus that when listening to this special song, the biggest difference is in the number of skips, the ones that should have responded but didn't, and the number was lower in our group. My last comment on this is that the reaction time didn't change significantly. Uh, that said, there's theoretically still room for future studies that we can look at to see if we can somehow determine more optimal frequencies and time constraints to improve those long-term effects. So that's for the part about how the experiment was run. I'm an ad agency guy, an advertising guy, so I'm probably not going to answer any specific scientific questions, but rather I would like to talk to you about how to link findings like that to some real functioning marketing or com communication activity. And that's what the musicians I have mentioned helped us with. We approached five Slovak musicians who prepared five songs under set conditions. To eliminate brain activity difficulties when the songs alternate, we combined these five tracks into one. So we created a DJ set of track more than 40 minutes long. Uh, it involved Adam Kuruc, the music producer who put the whole track together, Pioni, a very well-known and successful Slovak electronic experimental musician, you may know him for the tracks he does for theaters. This is Kevin. His real name is Roman Ferians. He's an electronic musician from the 90s. Bob San, a Slovak electronic musician. And Strun. He's primarily a vibra harp player, but of course he also does various electronic sounds. So you may ask, why do I keep mentioning the electronic stuff? Simply because this track belongs in this genre. You heard what the sample in the video sounded like. We know we could try to create songs in different genres so that um, you don't hear the same song repeatedly. We can try other genres of music that somehow cover up the, the not so pleasant sound. We also thought about expanding the project to include foreign musicians. This project is variable in terms of further marketing and communication and can be transferred to other gen genres and countries. Another thing we did was that we approached a Slovak artist called Asho Tas. He's a sculptor, glass artist. He completed studies at about four different ateliers and also studied painting and graphic design. He is dedicated to creating objects that are inspired by or somehow visualize music as such. And so he also created a piece like that for us at the event where we presented the project. He created the class object that you're seeing right now. It has our song encoded in it and it was shaped based on that song. And that's how the artwork, which is a visualization of the track, was created. The whole process was relatively complicated and lengthy. It took us almost a year, you know, from the point of starting research, creating the track, visualizing it, getting it to people and actually using it. That's why we got to the point where we presented it to masses and the audience. We called the media for the special event, the photos of which you saw earlier. Media such as RTVS, which is the radio and television Slovakia, Forbes, Strategy, or the portal Hudba.sk. And they gave us media spa space, and thanks to that, this project was put on the map. From there, 
we could help people with concentration difficulties. We decided to make this song, which you can buy even today for 9 euro and 90 cents. We are donating the proceeds from the song to the Mental Health League and specifically to the League's project for people with concentration difficulties. I've got a couple more slides about ADHD and I probably don't need to introduce what attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is. We tested this track on healthy people, not on people with this disorder. So when a person buys this song, they can concentrate a little bit better when they're studying, working or doing some other activity. And so it could perhaps also help people who have ADHD. And there's quite a lot of them. As many as 60% of people develop ADHD in childhood and the symptoms persist way into adulthood. And you know, the sad thing is that very few people know they have this disorder. Thus, also the number of people who seek help or who accept it is also very low. We decided to donate the proceeds of the 16 Hertz project to the Mental Health League and to this day the track, which some companies or individuals can purchase, contributes to the league. You can also go to our site and download or purchase the song. Several companies decided to give it to their employees as a gift last year before Christmas and the fact that we, that we live in a pandemic and the world of home office helped distribute this digital project among employees. You saw in the video people only needed to put on the headphones they were given and play the mp3 song. Then they could get on with their work. We started this project at a time when we were all stuck in lockdowns and yet we managed to get it out in the world. Thanks to this project, the agency won an award at the Golden Drum Festival last week where it got shortlisted and it also got shortlisted last year at the Zlatik Klinitz Festival. This project contributed to our agency's award package. The research itself, which was carried out by Mrs. Ulyanova, was judged to be the second most successful in Europe within the school projects that were underway. It was quite successful and what I really liked about it was that it combined the scientific dimension with the artistic dimension to produce something good and to help people. So with this project, the mission of our agency, which is to be involved in socially responsible projects that make a real difference and to use the latest scientific knowledge and technology to do that combined with visual or musical art was completely fulfilled. Thank you for your attention.